Welcome everyone. Today we'll have a special Zonely Banner video to look at all the free-to-play Primal Gems we can get and number of wishes we can get for the Zonely Banner. We'll go through those in details, especially the estimation of the dates, the number of Primal Gems for different events, and also how can we get a little more Primal Gems for the Zonely Banner. We'll go through some of the achievements for Patch 1.5, including the housing system, and also some of the other achievements. We'll be going through the Patch 1.5 patch notes with some of the clues and also hints for different events, different quests, and also different Primal Gems. We'll also have a look at the latest spots for different achievements, and also different events like the daily login event, the web event, and also other potential events similar to the Cleave event in the past. The Cleave event was actually really good. We'll talk about this. And also, how can we use the Star Glinter to purchase more wishes with the free wishes we get for the Zonely Banner? Now, because we're looking at all the Primal Gems for the Zonely Banner, I think it's quite important we also look at the rates and also probabilities for different characters that's coming in the Zonely Banner. So I also made a small summary over here for all the values we know on average, how many rows do you need for any of the 5 stars, how many rows do you need for Zonely, how many rows for any of the 4 stars, and how many rows do we need for any of the rate up or maybe for Yenfi. We'll look at those. We'll also have a look at some of the community's myth and also beliefs into single summons versus multi summons. And also 3 of the best spots to summon Zonely during his banner, with Zonely story and also lore supporting this one. Now coming over to the first part of the video, the free-to-play Primal Gem summary for the Zonely Banner. In total, we're looking at about 6,400 Primal Gems, about 7 wishes for the Intertwin Fate for Zonely, adding up to about 7,500 Primal Gems. Adding up to about 7,500 Primal Gems, or maybe 47 wishes. So let's go through this together. The first part of the Primal Gems income is quite standard. We'll be looking at 2 of the Spiral Abyss Clairs for about 1,200 Primal Gems at the maximum level. We can also look at this for about 1,100 if we cannot get all of the 3 stars. And similarly, there will be 21 days during the Zonely Banner, and each of those days will earn 60 Primal Gems. So the standard income during the Zonely Banner will be 2,460 Primal Gems. Now coming over to the special Primal Gem income for Zonely for Patch 1.5. The first thing we want to notice is the achievements for Patch 1.5. We have had a previous video on this one, it is about the housing achievements and also the other achievements that was discovered on Honey Hunters. So if we add all of those up, it's about 380 Primal Gems. And if you guys do want the detail of this one, I'll have the Excel available for you guys to look at all of those achievements, and perhaps get a lot of those when the patch starts. So because of this, we're estimating to about 380 Primal Gems, but it is very likely we can earn about 300 plus Primal Gems when the patch comes live. And similarly, we can expect about 600 Primal Gems during the maintenance and also for the bug fix. That's 300 plus 300. So those are pretty common. And also we got 20 Primal Gems for the Zonely Banner Trial. Now coming over to the notes with the patch notes. During the patch notes, we can see that there is a number of quests that is added to the game. And over here we can see the new quest with Zonely and also Eula. We'll be focusing on the Zonely Story Quest, which will give us the 60 Primal Gems and also another 120 Primal Gems from the Hangout event with Diana and also Noelle. What is interesting is the New World Quest. There seems to be 4 different New World Quests, so the 2 of those will be related to the Homeland system with the Teapot. And also we can see there's a number of new quests over here and also 2 more new quests that is coming. Because the new quest had a prerequisite, we are assuming those new quests may be giving us Primal Gems. And usually if it's a really good quest, it might give us 60 Primal Gems. So this may be a slightly high estimation, about 180 Primal Gems for 4 of the new quests with Patch 1.5. This may be as low as 30 Primal Gems each, so this might come to 90 Primal Gems. So we'll also talk about the Zonely quest with 60 Primal Gems, the Hangout event for 120 Primal Gems. And also, in the previous videos, we have had a look at the housing event. For the particular housing level up, for each of the levels, we'll get 60 Primal Gems. Now if we come back to the patch notes over here, we can see the major event with the Zonely Banner is also a free Diana event. For this event, you will start 2 days after the Zonely Banner, and you will finish pretty much on time with the Zonely Banner. So this event was going to last for about 18 days. The Zonely Banner will last for 21 days, so the 2 days gap allows this event to perfectly sync with the Zonely event. Notice for a major event, it actually have longer duration than 7 days. And this is why the estimation of Primal Gems for this event is much higher. We're expecting about 810 Primal Gems at least, and if we compare this with a free Fessel event, we got 810 Primal Gems and also 180 Primal Gems for the special quest during those events. Because I'm thinking the World Quest will be the special quest, notice the World Quest is equal to 180, and also the 810 Primal Gems over here add up to exactly the same as the Fessel Primal Gems. So I'm thinking the new World Quest and also the major event might share the same quest. 
And if this is the case, we'll be looking at 810 primal gems plus 180 primal gems, very similar to the festival event, which also lasted for about 18 days. Now coming over to the predictions of the dates of the other events for patch 1.5. We know there will be a Misty Dungeon, there, was a, there will be a Mini Tomo for the Hilly Troll Hunting, there will be a PvP Tag War event, and there will also be a Merchandise event. But those events are not revealed exactly. So if you come back to the patch notes again, notice that over here the new world quest will be added, including the Mr. Melody and also the Mini Toma. So what this means is, it is hinting some of those events will come after the Zoni banner. And notice that it is likely we have at least two of the patch 1.5 events after the Zoni banner. And by the process of deduction, usually we have three to two events in each of the banners. I am assuming we are going to have two events in the Zoni banner. Now coming over to the latest post on the Patch 1.5 event preview, we can see that the Wind Trace event is actually from the 14th of May to the 24th of May. This means this is actually the event that is going to join us for the Patch 1.5, the early part of Patch 1.5. So it's not going to be the Misty Dungeon, it's actually the Wind Trace event. So basically we're going to update those quests over here. Because during the recording previously, I thought it was the Misty Dungeon. I knew there was going to be one more event for Patch 1.5 during the Zoni banner, but I wasn't sure which one it is. So it is actually the Wintrace event that is coming on the first half of the Zoni banner. Now the estimation for the Primal Gems is about 300 to 420. We're estimating on the high end, but if it's on the lower end, we're looking at at least 300 Primal Gems for this event. Now the next method to get more Primal Gems is going to be coming from the monthly web checking event. This event will likely give us 40 to 60 Primal Gems, because every 7 days we can get 20 Primal Gems. And I do think we might be close on the point of 60 Primal Gems, or maybe this is only 40 Primal Gems. But there's only 20 difference, so I just left over 60 over here. Now the next question is, would we get a logging event for the Zoni banner? If we come over to some of the previous notes over here with the dates of the logging event for patch 1.4, this event did happen after the patch 1.4 update. And this event was not really introduced that much in the live stream as well. So I'm thinking there will be at least one of the logging event for the patches. And how we can predict this is, usually for the first half of the patch, we'll have a live logging event. And for the second half of the patch, we'll have the miscellaneous purchase of the box event. So notice those events will come at different half of the game. So this is why we have zero over here. We'll have 300 over here for the logging event. Now because there will be new dungeons, side quests, and also zones from the world quest, and also the zoni quest, we're estimating there may be up to 50 primal gems from the chests and also the loots from those particular additional areas. And similarly, we can expect about 2-4 to four web events with each of the patches. Usually they do come about 7 or 14 days. If you guys remember for patch 1.4, we'll have the Shaolin restaurant quest, and also lately the web quest for the Hilly Chow event. For those particular quests, we're looking at 120 primal gems for each of the quests. So if we have 4 of those, and if we have those, we're looking at 240 Primal Gems for 2 of those quests during the Zoni banner. And finally, we can expect some more promo code for Patch 1.5. During Patch 1.4, we have had 60, 60, and also 30 Primal Gem code. And the 260 Primal Gem code did came quite early for Patch 1.4. So we can estimate about 120 Primal Gems, or maybe 100 Primal Gems for Patch 1.5 during the Zoni banner. And hopefully we get a little more. Sometimes they used to give 100 Primal Gems as a code, but lately they've been giving 60 or 30 Primal Gems. Now coming over to the Special Wish and also Fates for Zonli. Because Zonli is a limited banner character, he can only use the Intertwin Fate. And why do I have 7 over here instead of 5? It's because we can purchase 5 of the Intertwin Fate from the Paimon shop, and the remaining 2 we can actually purchase from the Star Glinters. Now you may be wondering, how do you get the Star Glinters? It's because we can get about 45 wishes with the total free-to-play currency. And with those 45 wishes, we can get enough Star Glinters to purchase two more Intertwin Fate this way. So basically, I'm looping it around. The free-to-play summons is about 45 wishes. And if we use the free-to-play summons, which we get Star Glinters, and then we come back and purchase more of the Intertwin Fate, we can get about 2-3 to three of the Intertwin Fate within 45 wishes. And in case you guys are wondering, we do have the wiki over here. By pulling a duplicate 4 star character or duplicate 5 star character, you can get the star glinters. And also, each time we pull a weapon, we also get the star glinters. So on average, we get 1 extra wish for every 20 wishes we make. And this way, we can get up to 7 wishes within the Zoni banner. Now because we want to count all the possible ways for the Zoni banner, I was also thinking about any of the chances of getting more Primal Gems. One of the best events that was coming into the game was actually the Kli Secret Letter event. So if you guys remember the Kli Mail, this event came with Kli as a new character. 
and during this event, for 5 days, Clay was sending Primal Gems to us. From 200 Primal Gems to 200 Primal Gems, adding up to 700 Primal Gems. And I do believe this event was actually not shown during the livestream, so that came as a surprise with the Klee banner. Now we haven't seen anything like this for a while now. Hopefully this may come back in the future, but we haven't counted this into the addition. So those are the small chances we can get more Primal Gems. And similarly, if you guys have not reached level 40, 45, you know, 50 or 55 with adventure level, keep in mind you also get some more Primal Gems when you reach those levels. For example over here, if you reach adventure level 55, you can get 150 Primal Gems. And upon reaching adventure level 50, we can get about 100 plus 120 Primal Gems. So there's definitely more ways to get more Primal Gems. And also each time we level up our world level, we can also be expecting more chests in the areas we have already explored. So maybe we can look for about 100 to even 300 Primal Gems if there's a lot more chests left in the world. And finally, one of the things I was thinking as a surprise Primal Gems, maybe that Genshin Impact wins another award for 2021. During 2020, Genshin Impact actually won an award or was nominated for the App Store and also the Google Store. And because of this, the developers actually sent all of the players 600 Primal Gems. Now because this has happened once, so maybe if Genshin Impact wins another award, we can get more Primal Gems. But of course, well, I haven't counted those over here because I don't think those are very reliable. What I have counted is a repurchase of the wishes after every 20 wishes. So overall, we have summarized into about 6,400 Primal Gems, or about 47 intertwined fates which can be used for the Zoni banner. Let me know what you guys think about those number of wishes for the Zoni banner. We might have overestimated a little bit over here, so maybe minus one or two wishes. At least we can get about 47 wishes for the Zoni banner, which still looks pretty good. Because if each of the banners will get 45 wishes, then within one patch, we can guarantee at least one 5 star character. But the difficult part will come from getting the 5 star you wanted. Because as we know, there's a 50 50, there's also a guarantee. And this is why, for the second part of the video, I actually want to have a look at the probabilities for getting different characters we want in the banner. Now, if you haven't subscribed, this is a really good time to do so. Make sure you also turn the bell on for the latest news as I find more of them for us. You can see that we're really dedicated for Genshin Impact. We'll have builds, guides, tips, news, and events updates for everything that's Genshin Impact related. Now coming over to our second part of the video. Let's come over to this post by Seki Thess over here about the probabilities of getting different characters within the simulations. So what he has done over here is on average, how many rows do you need to get one constellation or one of this character? And over here, those are the average numbers. And also the average of getting your second constellation, third constellation, and also etc. for different characters. So what I did over here is, instead of reading the graph, I have made a summary of the probabilities if you guys were going for Zonli, if you're going for Yanfi. And this can be quite helpful. So coming over to some of the basic summaries. I'm sure you guys know the probability of getting a character in the banner. And this is from Genshin Impact with the banner details. So 0.6% of getting any of the 5 star, and also 5.1% for any of the 4 stars. The consolidated rate is after reaching on the PT, and usually there's a soft PT before this. And also a 50% chance of getting the rate of 4 star or the 5 star characters, when there's a gold or purple wish. Now I know those might sound a little confusing, so coming over to some straightforward summaries. So if you're looking to get any of the 5 star character from summoning on the limited banner character, the average wishes we need is about 62 wishes to get any of the 5 star character. Now on the extreme case, if you're super unlucky, you're looking at 80 to 85 summons. But usually, on average, it's about 62 summons. And similarly, if you're looking for the limited banner character, for this case will be Zone Lee. You will be about 94 wishes on average to get Zone Lee, which is about 1.237 times the amount of wishes we need for a soft pity of 76 summons. So when you summon for the Zone Lee banner, when you get a golden character, it might not be Zone Lee. But on average, if you keep wishing, the chances of Zone Lee do go up. And this is why it's about 94 average summons for one of the Zone Lee characters within the banner. Now if you're going for any of the 4 star characters within the limited banner, it is about 11 wishes on average. Initially I was like, hey why is it 11? It's because you can also get a 4 star weapon. Because of this, the average wishes are not 10, it is actually 11. So the weapon also takes about a spot. And also for the average number of wishes to get any of the limited 4 star character is about 12 wishes. So this includes any of the 3 limited rate up characters. Now if you're going for a specific character like Yanfi, this will take about 36 to 49 wishes on average. And the reason behind this is, it is much harder to get a particular rate up character, because all three of the characters will share the same rate. So we may be getting someone other than Yanfi, which is also a rate up. 
so this is when sometimes it can be even harder to get a specific 4 star over the 5 star characters. Now for the final part of the video, let's have a look at some of the community belief and also for the myth for summoning for the different character banners. So the first belief is that single summons are better than the multi summons. There's a number of reasons why this is the case. Because after 76 rows with a soft pity, if you summon for single summons, you are likely to save more summons for the next banner. So once you hit 76, your 77 up to 78 rows of the wishes within the banner have a really high chance of getting your 5 star. So this way, your next few wishes can be saved for the next banner. But there's also a belief in the community that multi summons actually have a higher chance of getting multiple golden wishes within the 10 summons. This is because sometimes if you get really lucky with the summons, you can be getting multiple golden stars within one of the 10 summons. This usually does not happen with multi summons with a single pool. So those are the trade offs You can save for some of the wishes after the 76 summons with a soft pity, or you can go for luck and try to get multiple golden characters within the 10 multi summons. Now there is also a community myth about summoning characters 1-2 to two hours after the banner is released. It's about not letting someone else steal your luckiness or maybe your RNG when summoning characters. There's also three different hotspots for Zone Lee, which we can have a look over here. So I have made a small recording over here to show you guys the potential hotspots for Zone Lee. The first spot is over here, and for this particular spot, it is during the story when Zone Lee was first summoned by Nguan. And you know, she summoned a dead Rex Lopez, of course. So what we can do is we can come over here and we can start to fly into this particular zone. And as we come over here, notice this is the particular spot that Zoni was supposed to be summoned by Nguan. If you have a Nguan on the team, maybe try to use her and also summon a Zoni banner over here. There's also a small Jade Chamber teleportation over here if you guys want to summon over here. But usually this spot may be the best spot to summon for Zoni. This is because Zoni in the story is supposed to be summoned over here. And multiple times do we come over here to worship Zoni and also to start the Zoni rituals. Now the second Zoni summoning spot is quite interesting. So some of the community members shared this one to me. So if you come over to this teleportation on the site where the pharmacy is, if you come over to the restaurant, you can actually go into the restaurant. And by going to the restaurant, you can see the number of seats that's available in the restaurant. Supposedly there's an idea. When the Archons used to meet up, you know, the seven of different elements of the Archons, the seven actually sits over here. So the idea is if you actually have Venti and you swap into Venti and actually sit over here, so you're having Venti as one of the Archons in the Archon meeting. You're waiting for Zonli. So maybe you can get him to summon over here. So this way you might have a higher chance of summoning for Zonli. Now the final location is around the Mok Mount Hala, so this is the particular special tree and likely where the particular Geo weekly boss will be landing over here. So the idea is if we fly over to this particular tree, and this is where the adapters are. And the community was saying that maybe this could be a really good spot to summon for Zonli. But I think this may be a good spot to summon for Xiao. Not sure about Zonli. You also get to see the particular statue over here. So it talks about the adaptize, talk about the lies of an evil dragon. So this may be also be a good spot to summon for Zonli. Let me know what you guys think about those summoning spots. I thought it would be really fun if we have a look at potential places we can summon for Zonli, and this just makes things a little more exciting. You know, having a bit of ritual, having a bit of preparation when we summon for Zonli. Now before we finish this video, keep in mind guys, we do want to set a budget before we start summoning. Because if we start summoning and we don't get the characters we want because of bad RNG, because we lose the 50-50, try to not spend money right away. Try to look at all the puzzle ways and also wait for the free to play primal gems first and try to summon him this way. And you know the banner will be here for 21 days, it's not going to disappear right away. So wait a little bit, calm myself down and have a budget before we start spending too much money into the game. And if you guys do plan to spend in the game, we do have a video guide over here to compare the best value for top ups in the game. So the $10 battle pass versus the $5 monthly card or versus the direct top up. So we do have a comparison over here to see which one is most valuable. So this is one of my previous videos about getting the best values. So definitely check this out. But don't feel pressured to have to purchase in the game. The game is definitely free to playable. We can still look forward to about 45 free wishes for the Zonely banner. And if you guys are saving for Eula banner, all of those wishes can also go to Eula banner. So let me know what do you guys think about those free to play wishes for the Zonely banner. And also if I missed anything, definitely let us know in the comments below. Now if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe and also turn the little bell on for the latest news. I'll be looking towards to make more builds, guides, tips and news and event updates for us as we come further into the game. And as always, I wish you guys 
the best of luck with Catherine and have the most fun in exploring this wonderful world.